There is no doubt when visiting Japan will be an incredible experience. But to make it even smoother and hassle-free, I'm going to share you some of the most essential tips and things that you should prepare before your visit to Japan. It is advised to frequently check Japan's entry requirement before you book a flight. As the renewed entry requirements are getting more strict, a visa might be required depending on which country you're from. Currently, visitors are required to have three doses of vaccination or provide a negative COVID test that's taken within 72 hours of arrival. Make sure you check Visit Japan web as they are currently the main platform for detailed information for foreigners who are trying to enter Japan. First, you will need to submit your vaccination test report to Visit Japan web for a review. Once reviewed, it will turn from red to blue. You will also be required to have your passport and your flight details ready to register the required information. After completing all the registration, you will be provided two QR codes. With everything submitted and the two QR codes provided, your procedures through immigration and customs will be a lot smoother and quicker. Please note that this might change very often in the future, so keep yourself updated. To stay connected during your trip, I highly recommend you get an international internet service set up before you enter Japan. Sakura Mobile will be a great option as they provide both short-term and long-term travel SIM card and portable Wi-Fi. And it is very easy to get one. Just click order, choose from when to when that you would like to have this internet accessed. Then choose your option of using a SIM card or a portable Wi-Fi. And lastly, choose your pickup location. If you choose airport, select the terminal that's closest to your arrival destination. Set a estimated pickup time and enter your flight number. Press checkout and proceed to payment. But in any case you're unable to do so, you'll still be given an option to purchase a internet access SIM card or a portable Wi-Fi from the airport. There is also an option to get one from any department stores like Big Camera or Yodobashi. If you need to ask for directions, use the information center from the airport, a department store, or even from the station, as they have more preparation for foreigners who aren't able to speak in Japanese. If in any circumstances that you are lost and you must ask someone, when asking Japanese people, learn how to ask slowly and calmly, as this could help them understand your situation quicker. Most importantly, do not forget to use Google Translate as they have a conversation function that can translate two languages simultaneously. Public transportation like trains and bus are the most convenient way to travel around in Japan. But it can also be extremely confusing for first timers. So make sure you download the Google Map app if you haven't already. Just like any navigational app, all you need to do is search for the location and it will provide you with the best routes depending on what kind of transportation that you have chosen. Here's a brief tutorial for you on how to use Google Maps to navigate around Japan's train station. First, use the app to check which platform you should be on. If the indicator shows two platforms like this, it means both of these platforms are going to the same location. Next, use the departure time and the inbound destination to confirm that you are boarding the correct train. And finally, use the exit signs to reach your location. Don't forget to get yourself a Suica or a Pasmo car for transportation because these little cars right here allows you to ride trains and buses all over Japan. A very essential item to have in your wallet. And if you prefer to use digital, you can actually transfer the data into your iPhone in the wallet app. Just make sure you keep it charged. Moreover, you can use your transportation cards in convenience stores like 7-Eleven, Family Mart or Lawson. And if you're traveling all over Japan, I highly recommend you to get a JR Pass because it can save you tons of money on train fares. Prepare a comfortable footwear because you will be walking a lot in Japan, especially when you visit Tokyo. You'll find yourself walking a lot instead of using a car. As transportations are convenient all over Tokyo, the need of a car has become slightly redundant. Look at it as a great opportunity to have a wonderful trip and having a healthy lifestyle. Also, if you're visiting during June and July, I highly recommend you get some waterproof footwear because it is the rainy season of Japan. And we can all admit no one likes wet socks and wet shoes while they walk. Prepare cash when you travel. It is true while Japan has become a more cashless based country, there are still a lot of places that does not accept credit card. So it would be a good idea to have a couple of yens around for smaller purchases on street foods or smaller stores. And in case of any emergency that you need cashed, I highly recommend you to use the ATMs and convenience stores, particularly 7-Eleven. They have the least amount of additional fees. You can use your ATMs to withdraw cash from most foreign bank accounts without errors. A very important thing to remember is to unlock your overseas foreign withdrawal access from your bank account before you come to Japan. 
but rules about wearing a mask in Japan will be relaxed soon after March, it is still a good idea to wear one, especially if you're in a crowded area or on a public transport. And Japan also have a strong culture of wearing masks during full season, especially during spring. Not only is it a good way to protect yourself, it's also a good way to protect others. So make sure you pack some masks with you along your trip or you can get them in convenience stores in Japan as well. So there you have it, the things that are essential and things that you should prepare before your trip to Japan. Follow these tips and I'll guarantee you, you'll have a hassle-free and unforgettable experience in Japan. And don't forget to check out our recent new video about things that you should do in Shibuya.